I apologize in advance for how sweaty and shiny I am. I just got back from the gym and now I've got two 500 watt lights blaring at me. So forgive me for looking like the slime monster from any of your favorite sci-fi films. Listen to this. So I had a lot of fun doing the other reviews with the album, so I thought this time I would have a little bit of fun. Do Fight Star's new album. Holy shit, Fight Star have a new album. And this is fucking huge because I haven't done an album in six years. And since the break of Busted in 2003, Fight Star have easily been my favorite band of all time. And they've never disappointed me with an LP. And holy shit, Behind the Devil's Back is no exception. Fight Star were the first band to introduce me to heavy music, so they've been the gold standard of that kind of thing since 2003, I guess. And. In 2009, they released Be Human, and then they just fell off the face of the earth so Charlie Simpson could focus on his folk project. So by 2014, I was like, alright, my favorite brand's broken up, they've kind of just disappeared, and I was getting ready to move on to my life. And then, in I think it was what, July 2015, they decided to release a track called Animal off this album, and Jesus Christ, I was so impressed. The thing is, I was repeating this song, it was just on repeat for like three months, right? And then they released the album, and all of the other songs just blew it out of the water. So it's like the weakest song in the LP, which makes the rest of the LP sound even huger, because th it's a pretty good song, and the rest of the songs are fucking mint. So production-wise, this album's completely different to anything else they've done, from the tasteful range of synths, to the soul-crushing guitar tones, to the snare that sounds like you're being punched in the face every time it gets hit. Behind the Devil's Back is... Honestly, a masterpiece when it comes to modern metal engineering. So when it comes to the guitar sound, it sounds like it's tuned a fair bit lower than the rest of the albums that they've done, but I did some tests. It's in the same tuning as the album that preceded it, Be Human, but they play it in such a way that it really accentuates the lower tuning. It's drop A, so it's already pretty heavy, but in this one they really focus on more open strings, but at the same time, it's not like Buried in Verona-esque, because no one wants to listen to that. I'm pretty sure it's safe to say that the entire rhythm section of this album is very technically based. I feel like with this album they've finally found a good midpoint between melodic and heavy, because it's always been their thing, kind of switching between really heavy bits and really melodic bits, but they've never really found a good midpoint. In their 2008 album, Alternate Endings, it was a little off-putting having these two tracks on the same album next to each other. With Behind the Devil's Back there seems to be a constant flow of vibe and while there are very heavy bits and while there are very melodic bits they seem to find a, a really good way of transitioning between those two bits without it sounding jolty or off-putting or kind of startling. At the same time, which is pretty impressive, they managed to keep a constant vibe with this EP without all the songs sounding the same. Every single song has something to remember, which is something I love about an LP. I hate it when I think of an LP and it just reminds me of one chorus. I'm like, oh yeah, that's that song. That's the LP with this song on it. This is the LP with ev with like fucking 40 minutes of just jams on it. In terms of instrumentals, I feel like they've definitely taken a little bit of inspiration from the more modern metal genres, such as, I don't know, prog metal, or oh, well, modern prog metal, and, uh, like, technical metalcore. And I feel like they're kind of drifting away from using classical metal riffs that revolve around the minor pentatonic scale. I feel like they definitely came to their own with their use of sharps and flats with this EP. ELP. Shit. And it's of course no secret that their drummer, Omar Obidi, is upholding his insatiable habits to break from the regular 4-4 patterns and throwing in snares and kicks in just weird places, but oh my god, they add so much more punch to the songs. They also have a couple songs in here that are in weird type signatures that everybody knows that I hold dearly to my heart. Won't you come and sit on my knee, Lyrically, the vocalist Charlie Simpson really came to his own in this album, raising Fight Star's lyrics to pretty mediocre to pretty fucking good. Vocalist Charlie Simpson continues his streak of gut-wrenching highs complemented by the occasional falsetto bar, accompanied by none other than the angelic cleans of Alex Westaway, who surprisingly does all of the vocals on More Human Than Human, 
which is a nice slow change of pace from the rest of the songs. It's kind of right in the middle of the album and then it gets back into it. As I said before, it doesn't actually change the vibe of the entire album. It's the same snare, same guitar tone, just a little bit slower and then it's right back into it. So throughout the course of listening to this, I don't think you'll run out of things to remember about this full length. I mean, there's everything from the creative use of the uh, minor scale riffs to the unique synths to the choruses that won't get out of your head until they release their next at full length, which hopefully does happen. They don't take another fucking 15 year gap. But anyway, I'm going to enjoy listening to this until they release their next full length, which hopefully does happen. They don't take another 15 year gap. Uh, but yeah, this is a really good album. You can find it on iTunes, Amazon, uh, they have a web store, all of which I will link below. And hopefully I encourage you to buy some good music. Or you can stream it on YouTube if you're an asshole, like I am. <laughs> well, can you